of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank Abu Abraham and Abu Murus and for their love and for support they always show to us and to my weakness. And um, I'm really so happy and so delighted to be among you. Before I start, I was thinking to talk to you about the joy of salvation only. And with the events which is happening in Egypt and everybody is troubled, um, there is no joy of salvation without cross. And the joy which is after the cross is really waiting for all of us, but we have to carry the cross first. And this is why when we look at the life of Virgin Mary, we will be surprised that nothing is mentioned in her life that is joyful at all. And all the hymn we hear this day, these days, I mean, for Virgin Mary's and for all the Tamagid and glorification for Virgin Mary, all of them will tell her, you may find that the word full of joy, full of glory, full of blessings is repeated, Lahn Rashi, the hymn of Rashi Nivain. And all the word Rashi, you'll find it repeated many times for the joy. We are saying that Virgin Mary has joy. I'm sure that during her life, the joy of being the mother of Christ is something we should not, it should not depart from our mind. It's always there. But according to what we see, we can go through the life of Virgin Mary quickly just to see kind of crosses she was bearing one after the other. From her birth, she lost her mother in young age. And of course, this is something painful. So if any of us feel that we have a cross to carry, I feel that I'm lonely in this world. I feel that nobody is understanding me. Again, this is something is very mild compared to our beloved Virgin Mary. Not only that, she was sent to serve in, the, in this young age, two, three, four years, to serve in the altar. So it was not an easy job. Maybe not many of her family members are visiting her or were visiting her. And another cross, the separation from people and relatives she knows, another cross that she stays with in the altar, just preparing things, arranging, cleaning, and sewing or doing a lot of works, but she was there. When the time came, that anyone who is dedicated and who is in the altar, that they have to leave the altar. When the time comes, they told her, you have to leave the altar, so you have to live with an elder man who can take care of you. She has no say. She has to say, okay, and yes. So they entrusted her to Joseph, another third place. No, she doesn't know anything about him. She is going to live in his house to serve him, and again, another cross. Fourth cross, we can see that she dedicated to be virgin all her life. Not because she is, um, the thing which wasn't, if you know, in the Old Testament, anyone who doesn't have kids, who is barren, cannot give birth to children. She is considered that this is a curse for her because something very bad that she is prevented from the privilege to be a mom or a grandma for Christ when he's born by flesh. So that, that is why for every lady in the Old Testament, it was considered as something very shameful that God is rejecting this lady who is not able to give birth in the Old Testament. So Virgin Mary was not only humble, but when she decided to be a virgin all her life, this is why we call her ever virgin, but when she decided to stay as a virgin all her life, she felt unworthy no matter what. She cannot be worthy to be a mom or a grandmother for Christ. And this is why when our Lord chose her to be the mother of the only begotten son, she was really worthy because no one like her in the whole world to be that humble, not to be, not to brag, not to, not to just imagine any mother among us 
who has a um, cute baby and he's, he looks nice, he's beautiful, everybody, everyone is, uh, is smiling as his or her face and she'll be so proud and she wants to show her son to everyone. But Virgin Mary did not. So this is the one whom our Lord chose and this is the one who dedicated herself to be virgin. Christ said, this is my mother, she's going to be my mother. When the angel appeared to her and he told her something surprised never in history that a, a lady to be a mom without a husband, this is what the angel told her. She told him how, I want to understand how, I don't know a man. And of course, the angel explained to her that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So the point is, cross after cross, something she wants and something God wants, and all the time what God wants was totally different than what she wants. And she say she was total obedient, with total humility. She was accepting one cross after the other, and one pain after the other, and whatever she says is let it be according to what you say, or let it be according to what God wills. And this is really something about Virgin Mary we cannot deny or we cannot neglect. Not only that, few years after or few days after when Herod decided to kill all the, the children, she tried to escape to Egypt. And of course, it was a very tough journey and she was jumping from one place to the other, another cross to carry the feeling of to be as if it is, um, she's a refuge, she is going into a different country, it's a different place, looking for some shelter from the cold and from the sunlight and just took another cross she was. Not only that, we forgot to say about her poverty from the time she was in the altar and the time she was with Joseph, who is a carpenter, not fancy life, but also the poverty she was accepting and she never complained or we didn't hear, hear her complaining about any of her situation and also we should complain about all the blessings God gave us right and left and we still complain about why I don't have this thing, why I still uh, suffering from this problem, why I still have and murmuring against God and against what he's doing. But Virgin Mary taught us the lesson that she was so obedient and she was thankful in everything. So her life is from one cross to the other, from the cross to the other and of course till the time of the crucifixion but I'd like to contemplate and to remind you with the verse, I'd like to talk to you about it today. When Virgin Mary said, my, uh, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. So we can say that the rejoice of Virgin Mary during her life was not something from outside. Everything outside is calling her to be sad and to be upset and to to lose hope and to lose uh, faith and trust in God, but actually, in, deep inside her, she said this word, my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. And this is why what I'd like to talk to you, or the idea of, of what I'd like to talk to you about today, is the joy of salvation. Do we really have this kind of joy? Do we really feel, do we really feel God salvation, God's salvation is a reason for me to be not only joyful or happy and كل واحد فينا يبقى you feel that he is really really not just have a smile on his face but deeply inside him and inside you all to feel that joy, this is I feel that I'm sure that Virgin Mary even if she didn't have that kind of joy maybe Till the end of her life, I forgot to tell you, of course, after the crucifixion of our Lord, she said the word that the, re the world rejoice for receiving salvation, but my soul, um, in the ninth hour, what we say, um, the world rejoice for salvation, but my, uh, my inward parts are burning inside me when I see you on the cross, my God and my son. So this feeling under the cross again, and then not only again, where did she go after that? 
She didn't have a place to stay in. Christ now is, is, is crucified, so she went to another stranger, John, John the beloved, maybe is not a stranger, maybe even some people, they say he was a cousin of Christ, but anyhow, again, another stranger. So her life was from one cross to the other. So let us talk now about, or about the joy of salvation. Uh, another way of just thinking about a couple of verses talking about the joy of salvation, one, all of you repeat it maybe two, three times a day, which is, anybody knows? Something related to the joy, joy of salvation? Hmm. We say it in the Agbeya, in the introduction of the Agbeya. Psalm 50, Psalm 50, David said the word when he said, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. You know the story of David? He committed the sin of adultery. He committed the sin of killing. And then he forgot totally about it, as if he was anathetized. He didn't feel anything wrong. Till God sent him Nathan the prophet and told him, David, there was a guy who has a lot of goods, and he has a neighbor, and this neighbor good. He took from him because he has a friend. What do you think we, we could do about this guy? He said, certainly he should die. And Nathan the prophet told him, you are the one. So this was shaking him and this is when he started to write Psalm 50. And this is when he said the word, restore to me the joy of your salvation. As if David wants to tell us something. That if you are living with Christ, if there is no sin inside your heart and you are repenting, you have joy of salvation. But if you have sin is hiding in your heart, it is doubtful that you can enjoy the joy of salvation. Because if I have, if I'm hiding, as David said, Bardo, uh, if I am hiding a, a sin in my heart, God will not respond to my prayer. So it is obvious that the joy of salvation, which David is asking God, please God, restore to me the joy of your salvation. He lost it by committing a sin. And this is also a reminder for us to think about what could be a cause that I don't have the joy of salvation. So, sin is a problem, happened from the, from the time of Adam, Sin entered into the world, and this sin, as a consequence of sin, we got this corrupt nature from the sin of Adam, from Adam, and we started to have the same punishment. Each one of us, because we have the same nature, we should die. But when our Lord Jesus Christ came and he took our sin away, this is the salvation in very short, brief way of expressing it, that Christ came from heaven, took our sins, died for our sake, and the door which was closed in front of us to enter into heaven, this door was opened again. And this is salvation. We are happy, enjoying, we should rejoice because of it. And this is why, because Christ punishment. If I ask one of you that, uh, God forbid, I myself, not any of you, I got very sick, okay? I have a very fatal disease. When I went to the doctor, he told me, you are going to die in three, four days. And then I told him, is there any solution? He told me, it looks that it is hopeless case and there is no cure, okay? And then all of a sudden, this doctor called me, listen, there is a doctor coming from another planet, from Mars, and he has a medication with him. And this medication, if you got it, you will be cured from the disease you have. And I have no other option. I will die if I don't take the medication. So I went to the doctor and I agreed to take the medication and to my advantage that it happened that I was cured. How do I look at this person who gave me this medication? He is a savior to me. He saved my life from death. He saved me from the problem which I have, which is the disease which was definitely leading me to death. And this is exactly salvation in brief. Salvation is Christ took the punishment of sin and he took it on his behalf. And he died for it. 
and he gave me the life, his life. He cannot die, so he raised again from dead. And he gave me his own life as a kind of blood transfusion, which is making me, I will not die, I will live forever. So my look to the Savior and my look to the salvation he offered me, that this is something I should rejoice. I should be always glad about it. So this is why the joy of salvation is, is something, it has to be deep inside us. But the first thing will come to our mind, okay, it's theoretically right, and it is nice, but practically I don't feel that. In order to rejoice with the salvation we have, we have to think about what are the problems we are facing now. You will find that we have four problems. Last one of them, I will start from the last and then closer. Death, we have a problem of death. We have another problem, the devil who is fighting against us. Whenever we try to do something good, we'll find him that he's fighting us back and he wants us to do something bad. Sin, okay, and habits. All of these four things are problems facing us in our life, and it is a cause for us to lose our salvation and to lose the joy of salvation. Number one, let us start with sin. Sin is a separation from God. Sin, any sin inside my heart or inside any of yours heart is a separation from God. So don't expect that you can accept in the same heart God and sin at the same time. If you want to have the joy of the presence of God in your life, you have to dig and search for the sin which is inside your heart, which you put layer after layer of denial and, and just put it in a corner. F.B. Meyer once in a, in a book, um, I read it in Arabic, it's called uh, Basil Zet. He did a lecture in 1969 in, uh, in Brooklyn. And the lecture was about one time he was asleep and he, he went into a nap and he saw a vision. He saw in the vision that he has a key and God is asking him to give him a, a tour in his house. So he went from one house to the other, to the other, to the other, till he, at, at the door of one of the rooms, he uh, told him, I want to enter Christ, asking him to enter this room. He told him, no, God, I can't. I show you everything in my house except this room. And God told him, I am sorry. I cannot stay with you unless you give me this one key you are holding in your hand to open this door and to enter in it. This is the sin which each one of us has certain sin. He's trying to hide it, to hide it from God, to hide it from anyone. He's trying to deny it, to forget about it. And he is complaining that Christ, where is Christ? I don't feel his salvation. I don't have the joy of, of the old Christians. When someone, atheist or heathen, see him, his joy will jump into his face and it will be like an infection. Anyone see a Christian? He's becoming joyful like him. Where is this joy? The reason of this closed room, this hidden sin inside my heart, which is deep, deep inside my heart. Unless we open this room and we start to clean with this room, God and salvation and the joy of salvation will not come to our life. After sin is habits. Habit is a repetition of sin. So what a number of sins we are all surrounded with these, these days. One will say, I am a slave of um, a lot of things, wine, drugs, uh, lottery, or um, smoking, or sexual things, whether it is porn over the computer or, or any actions or, and so on, or gambling. And I cannot tell you how many houses are destroyed because of gambling. One after the other. What is a habit? A habit is a repetition of sin. It's a sin which is by repeating it a couple of times, it becomes a habit harder for me to get rid. Again, another cause of losing the joy of salvation. 
we are inviting to our hearts, to our homes, to our lives. And be careful that sins is not going to affect you only. It will affect you. It may affect even your family members. It may affect the whole church. We are not singles in a church. We are members of one body. So don't think that a sin or a habit, when it is affecting you, it will affect you only. It will, aff it will affect the whole church. So this is why our Lord was so concentrating that we are members of one another. We are members in the body. This is why the joy of salvation, we are again lacking that joy of salvation. Third is the devil outside us. Sin and habits are inside us. The devil is outside. The devil is fighting. And our Lord told us that I'm not promising you with an easy way. It is hard way. Every step you are going to take, you will find one obstacle after the other from the adversary, your enemy. He is trying. But you have the key to conquer, to be victorious. This key is in your hand. It is your will. If you let your will unite with the will of God, you will be able to be victorious. And this is the third thing, or the third enemy. We said sin, we said habit, we said the devil, and the last enemy is death. Thank God, death is no longer a reason for us to be sad. So any of you don't get upset because you hear a lot of things about people who died in Egypt or anywhere else because we feel that death is something bad. No, it doesn't matter. God does, it, does not care a lot about if you and I, if we are dying at our five years old or our 20s or our 90s years of age, God doesn't care about how much you live in on this earth. God cares about your salvation. So if you feel that the best time for you to be able to enjoy salvation when you are nine or 10 years of age, I think this will be the best time for you to, to, to meet him. So don't let this feeling that someone died young, someone was a youth and he didn't enjoy uh, even to get married, to, to, nothing of this should affect us. Death is an enemy and we thank our Lord Jesus Christ that he conquered this last enemy, which is death. And he showed us the way to enjoy his resurrection by, abling, by making us able to get rid of sin. And this is again something we should be so happy about it and so glad for the salvation that God is preparing for us. So what could be a reason or causes of us that we are not having that joy? We said most of them. But again, I encourage you to review your trust in God. Do you trust God? Do you trust his, his salvation? Or do you still, till now, is really God there? I prayed a couple of times. It looked that he's, done, he's not listening. I have a problem. Why, if there is a God, why my problem was not solved? And I have this problem in my health. Everybody is making fun of me. Or I got uh, old and I didn't get married. So what is a lot of problems? Once the problems, we feel that they are here, Christ is not here. Who said that? Who said that God is not protecting from another bad and more serious problems? We don't see and we don't trust God. I always like the example of trust in seeing, I enjoy seeing the kind of acrobat, that, I don't know if you see it or not, the Chinese acrobat or any acrobat in circus or something, that someone threw himself in the air and the other one will hold his hand. What kind of trust is the person who is doing two jumps in the air and waiting for the second? His partner is going to hold his hand in the air because if he didn't, he will fall, of course he will die and will be something very bad will happen. So how much trust is this person trust this person? So if humans can trust each other to that extent that he puts his life in the hand of a human who may have mistakes or he may not do it right or he may not catch him in the, in the, in the proper time, we do not still, we do not trust God. We have to trust. We have to have no fears or no anxiety. There is no reason for you to, get a, be, to be afraid from anything. God already told us, if you, any of you attended the liturgy today, the gospel was, uh, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, because they can't do anything, uh, on anything more, so don't be afraid. Fear and anxiety has no place, and this is one of the things which make us all the time lose our peace and our salvation and the joy of our salvation. 
So what to do to be able to enjoy the salvation Christ offered us? Number one, repent. Repent, not a word, not even something. Uh, it has to have to be accompanied with joy. You cannot um, say that you repent because you came to Abuna in confession and you confessed and that's it. And tomorrow is like today and today is like yesterday. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. If you are really repenting and if you came to Abuna with confession, the time you are meeting with Christ in the presence of Abuna is a time of commitment and change in your life. You come out of the room you, are, you confessed in or from the church a new person enjoying the white page, the white heart you received from God because every sin you confessed is erased and you have a very white garment and white heart you are starting your life with. Enjoy it. Repentance with, at your home, completing it with confession here is a very important step to let you enjoy the salvation of God. I remember a lady, she was coming from Egypt she is about 67 or 68 years of age. And I just made, I was by the will of God, Yani, I was uh, talking about confession in the sermon after liturgy. And the lady, this lady was coming just for a short visit for 10 days. And she came and she told me, Abuna, why did you talk about confession today? I told her, because uh, this is the subject, uh, Yani, the Bible was talking something about forgiveness of sins. So I talked about confession. She told me I didn't confess since I was 25 years of age. And the reason was I have a very bad sin. I was so embarrassed to say it to anyone. So I tried always not to even attend sermons in the church. Sermons are always after liturgy. So I take the communion and I flee in order not to hear or to see anybody or to hear something about confession. But today I have to, to stay because I came with someone to attend the, the, the sermon. And I found that your sermon was about confession, so I have to confess. Can I confess? Of course. She confessed something, in my opinion, it is something so small, so, yeah, I, I don't hear it often at all in confessions, but I just want to describe to you the, the, the feeling she has before and after. She was like a baby who is getting the, the most precious gift ever you could imagine, and she was rejoicing and she was telling me how full I am all my life. How did I, I waited for this many years and prevented myself from this uh, simple thing which the church is doing for us, for our salvation. Believe me, repent and confess. This is the key to enjoy the salvation and the joy of salvation. Second point is be humble. Um, our lady, lady, Virgin Mary, he said the word, he said, for he is mighty, for, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Feeling always that you are humble and God is mighty. Feeling always that you are so, compared to God, you are full of sins and you need the, the holiness of Christ and God. Be careful and come to God with a, with a humble heart. As James the apostle said, he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Give grace to the humble. Why do we say that our Lady Virgin Mary is full of grace? Because she is full of humility. The more you are humble, God will fill the rest. An example, if you have a glass of water, okay, and this glass of water is half filled, you will say that I feel that I can do it 50%, I need God only to do the 50%, God will not be able to interfere except by the 50%. But the more you feel, this is the word, he emptied himself. The more you are able to empty yourself, as if you tell yourself, I am like an empty cup. I have nothing good in me, as St. Paul said. I have nothing good in me. When you feel that, this is the time you are going to be full of grace. And this is why we call Virgin Mary full of grace because she is full of humility. Feel that she is, she said that he sent the, the proud empty. And he, Virgin Mary, if you hear her, her praising with Elizabeth, it is full of humility. If you want to enjoy salvation, you have to be humble. Last is 
to unite with God. If you want to be conquerors, if you want to be victorious in your warfare against the devil, if you want to be always from glory to glory and from victory to victory, be always united with Christ. And the ways the church is giving us the way to unite with Christ, either unite with his written word when you read it and apply it in your life, or with unite with his edible body and blood. And this is where we get the strength and we get the joy. It is not expected or accepted for someone to come to the church, to take the body and the blood, and he goes out sad or goes out not rejoicing. At the time of communion, we say, praise God, and it is full of joy. You, you hear it, it is like, like a march, like it has a melody which is rejoice, rejoice. Why do we rejoice? Because you are taking Christ, you are uniting with Christ. So be humble, unite with God, repent and confess to be able to enjoy the salvation of Christ. May our Lord remember his church and be with the church <coughs> in, e <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> in Egypt and in every place and be with us and bless all our lives and put in our hearts the joy of his salvation to whom is glory.